Hello, everyone. It's me, and being now a PhD student from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. And here I will introduce the, our recent research on LED camera uh, via a reflex code. And this work was collaborated with our group member Jiang Tian and the main supervisor, Professor Jun Lo. Before I introduce the reflex code, I would like to uh, explain why we designed a reflex code, and also brief the background of the LED camera we are seeing. The right figure shows the typical system, uh, system configuration for LED camera VLC system. We have the LED transmitter on this ceiling, and the user holding your smartphone may shoot the LED transmitter directly, so this is a direct LED camera VLC. And the user actually can shoot the wall, and the wall is works as the reflector, that's reflecting light from the LED transmitter, so that's we also can receive the message. So this is a reflex uh, LED camera communication system. And the first academic research on LED camera where say it's actually used the reflex light for communication. So it's the reflex LED camera where say. But in that network, the authors didn't deal with interference from neighbor transmitters because they are using only one LED transmitter. And the communication range is only several centimeters. So many following researches focus on the direct LED camera VLC. For example, the rolling light and the ceiling cast. Because under a direct LED camera VLC, the LED transmitters are largely spatial divided, so there is no interference from neighbor transmitters. We also omit the discussion on another two types of the VLC system. The LED PD VLC uses a photodiode as a receiver, and it can achieve a very high data reads. And the screen camera VLC uses the screen as a transmitter. So, as mentioned before, the main research on LED camera VLC is focusing on the direct LED camera VLC. And, but we find that the data rate of direct LED camera VLC is confined by the dimension of the ROI in your frame, shows in the right figure. But, and the ROI is actually determined by the size of the LED transmitter and the communication distance. So if you want to improve the throughput, you may want to use a larger LED transmitter or reduce the communication distance. But we cannot find a very huge LED transmitter in our lighting infrastructure, and we also have to maintain a reasonable communication distance at uh, several meter, meter levels. So let's take the reflex light. Uh, according to the light propagation, and if under the reflex lighting, and we work out an uh, image transmitter, and actually the image transmitter the size is depending on the size of the original transmitter and also the distance between the transmitter and the reflector. So that means the, actually the LED transmitter is actually amplified. So we will get a larger ROI in your frame and thus a higher throughput. Besides on the uh, improvement on the throughput, the reflector uh, light com uh, LED can uh, where the system has the potential to uh, extend the some uh, potential application of LED camera wheels. So for example, those state lighting or gallery lighting, because in those cases, we normally use the small size uh, sport lights. And they, because it's so small, we may not use for, for the direct LED camera wheels, but we can use the reflex light for uh, communication. Um, However, uh, realize such a reflex night LED camera VLC is not very easy because we have to deal with the two challenges. The first one, as mentioned, the interference from neighbor transmitters. As shows, those three LED transmitters are lighting a common reflector. And we will got a mixed band that cannot be decodable. And another challenge is we will got a normal SNR because we use the reflex light and it's longer the light propagation path. So we have got a normal SNR. Fourth lengthening, we can deal with those challenges by collaborative transmission. 
if we use the collaboration transmission, we can centralize, uh, synchronize all LED transmitters. Thus, we can avoid the interference and also improve the SMR because we can use all uh, the light uh, um, power from all LED transmitters. So thus, we can get a higher SNR. And the right figure definitely shows we can get a, a clear pattern that we can decode for communication. So let's say a general scenario. If we have an LED transmitters, lighting a common uh, reflector, depending on how many transmitters are on at a given moment, the reflect light intensity has n plus one scales due to the superposition. So take this three LED transmitter as an example. It's actually used in our test bed. If all LED transmitters are on, we will get a totally dark for symbol zero. And the middle one is on, we will get uh, symbol one. And another two TX1 and TX2 on, and TX2 off, we will get the symbol two and all on for the brightest level for the symbol three. A way to term this uh, modulation is a grayscale shift kin. It's actually the amplified shift kin, but um, for LED camera, we'll say we, in our frame, we use the grayscale gray um, because it's a term in the image precision. And the grayscale uh, shift kin is actually a higher order mod modulation because one sample actually carries two bits. Um, this slide shows that we can use a different number of the transmitters to form different GX symbols. For example, if we have only one LED transmitter, we will get the two GSK is actually the OOK, and we could form three GSK with two transmitters and four GSK with three transmitters. And because the VRC is actually piggybacked on the lighting infrastructure, so our communication should not um, cross any for the curve. But existing DC balance code is not suitable for our GSK because our GSK is a higher order modulation. Let's take a simple three a stream. S3, S1, S3, S1 marked in red, say exam, uh, for example. And it looks like the Manchester coding, but, in, but if we look into the individual LED transmitters, and the TX2 is actually stays on, on such duration four successive time slots. So this will uh, generate uh, the low frequency components on TX2 that will may uh, cross the flicker. So we propose the NC codes. On the R NC codes actually split one GX symbol into a pair of a GX, sim GX symbol, the original one and its complementary symbol. For example, the GX, uh, S3, we will split into S3 and S0 because S0 is, a, is S3's um, complementary symbol um, under our 4 GSK. Actually, our NC codes are superposed lighting and degraded down to the Manchester coding for individual uh, transmitters so that our GSK is uh, flicker free. So we have, now we have the um, reflex transmitter. Let's see how it works on the server side. The uh, left picture shows a green scale of inner frame, and we can find that the tonal range of green scale symbol stream in your frame is not uniform distributed because of the spatial uh, distribution of the transmitters. And typically, we will got a brightest uh, frame center and a gradual radiation intensity to both sides. So thus, our reflex uh, receiver first find the Bright the symbol and also use the grayscale scale of the pixels uh, on the both sides. That's form a rough threshold to detect the headers. Once all headers are detected out, actually the grayscale of the headers is actually reverse the grayscale distribution of this frame. Thus we can use a form or envelope and set the threshold for each symbols according to this piecewise fun linear function envelope. However, if we just use only the one white uh, demodulation based on this threshold, we will got a very high demodulation error because 
If we just use the threshold, we cannot recognize the middle symbols for S1 and S2 because S1 and S2 is actually located in the transition of the two adjacent S0 and S03. So, and this um, demolition error will get increased under a higher frequency. So we propose to use the first, uh, first and the second order derivatives of the grayscale to recognize a judging point that uh, where is the real symbol for the S1 and S2. So in short, our reference code receiver first located the headers in your frame and use the grayscale of the header to determine the threshold and also use the um, derivative, uh, first and second order derivatives of the grayscale to determine judging points and compile those two methods to demodulate the symbols and convert it to the bits and form a packet for our forward error creation in decoding. To verify, uh, to verify our idea of reference code, we build two prototypes. The smaller scale prototype used a uh, commercial sports nights as I demoed yesterday. And a larger uh, scale one, we use the commercial LED strip to light uh, a room. And here we uh, configure a packet with a header of the five sixes of S3 and the one and uh, S0 to form the headers. That's uh, we were used for the decoding. As mentioned, if under a higher frequency, we will make out a higher demodulation error. So we first in, in, invalidate the frequency impacts on the demodulation. We use the PRR and the PER as a matrix. As we can see, the PRR is increasing with the increase of the transmitting frequency because under higher frequency, the each symbol will take a short term. So one frame can carry more packets. But if they transmit uh, frequency over six kilohertz, the PR is dropping because we will got a higher PR, thus we fixed the transmitting frequency at six kilohertz hereafter. Um, now we also perform uh, invalidate the performance under the ambient night. As a common method for VRC, we integrate a high pass filter in our reference code receiver. So that's, it can remove the low frequency ambient night. As you can see, our reference code receiver is insensitive to the interference of the ambient night. Now let's see uh, how the reflectors uh, impacts on the performance because the reflect is actually the basic of, basic of our reflex code. Here we uh, use a uh, choice of five colors of the reflectors. Uh, the left picture shows the white color got the best performance because the white color have a less impact on the frame um, in, uh, on the bands. So, and actually the a white color reflector actually like a mirror like uh, reflector, so we got the best performance. And we also evaluated how the um, reflectors and texture impacts on the performance. As we can see, the horizontal hedge got the best performance because our uh, phone is uh, exposed column by column, so we got a uh, victory bands, and this horizontal is a perpendicular identical with this uh, band, so it has a less uh, impact on the performance. Uh, for those cases, we have the uh, higher PR and the lower PR. Our reference coding actually can deal with this to deliver a reasonable com uh, throughput. So not say the real throughput of the reference code. We also uh, set a baseline that all three transmitters um, transmit the same packet at the same time to avoid the interference and also improve the uh, SNR. So as we can see, the reflex code is act, um, outperforms the baseline at all distance and even can go 
our ma uh, maximum throughput at uh, 3.5 kbaps on our uh, small scale test bed and uh, the around the 4 kbps on the, our larger scale uh, test bed. And the average uh, throughput can almost 3 kbps at our large scale at 3 meters. We also evaluated how the viewing angle impacts on the throughput. As we can see, our, our reflex code out, uh, outperforms the base 9 and it can support our maximum uh, viewing angle with uh, about uh, the 60 degrees. So it's time to have a conclusion on my presentation. We proposed uh, uh, the idea using the collaborate transmission under the uh, neighbor transmitters under reflecting light to form GSK so as to avoid the interference and improve the SERP. We also built two prototypes to showcase the efficiency and effectiveness of our innovative modul uh, modulation scheme based on grayscale. So that's all, thank you.